Hi everyone, Nanagon here, your most favorite fat-free tutorial maker on YouTube. Let's be honest, the only one. But today I wanted to spend a little time on models. Uh, fat-free also calls them mappers. Uh, I'll use them interchangeably, but I like calling them models because that's kind of a more widely accepted use of the term. So what I've done here in this project is I created a new project from the fat-free dev tools um, helper. Uh, and so I have this and then I borrowed a little bit of code from the MySQL database video that I did. So here we have our car parts controller and all this and I'll just turn this guy on and uh, we'll do fat free serve on port 8000. So we'll come over here and you can see we have some of the stuff we left here. There's engine, there's muffler, there's gas tank and if we come back over here you can see all we're doing here is when you hit the index, we just go to the database and we run a query. That's really all we're doing. So what could we do in order to make us not type out SQL statements everywhere? Because that's kind of the point of a model is so that it's a little easier to work with in the code, but also so you're not writing SQL everywhere. Well, that's where models or mappers, again, we'll call them models. That's where they come in. So we'll start making us a little mapper. So we'll call this, I like capitalizing mine, equals new DB SQL mapper. <clears throat> and I like making that all caps. So what this wants is a table. Well, let's see, first it wants the database connection. So there's that, and then it's the table. So this is car parts. So now one method that you'll use in here is you'll do something like car parts. And if I don't give it any arguments with find, it will find everything. So let's see what this does. All of a sudden this got way, 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 way bigger. Why did it get so much bigger? Well, when it's a mapper object, it's actually quite different. You can see Here's the fields, and then there's ID and name. If we actually bump this out to be more of a print R, a little more friendly, you can see everything. So you can see here's fields, ID, and then value is one. And then fields, name, value is engine. And so all of these things and triggers are in place in case you wanted to make a change to the particular model that you're working with. But what if you're just like, well, I just want to display the thing? Well, you can. So what you could do is we'll save this to all car parts. So now we have this and then we'll do a for each statement. For each all car parts as car part. There's a little method called, well, let's see, print r uh, car part cast. And this will take the car part model that you have because all these, so when you do find, it finds all the different rows and each row then becomes a model. And in here, I'm iterating over all the models and this is a singular, single model. So when I use cast, what it's doing is it's making it be an array, and then I can just print R over an array just like normal. So I'll save this, if I refresh, there, it looks a little bit better. So now it's a lot cleaner and you have all your data to mess with. However, you still can do this, like even without doing cast, I could do echo ID, car part ID, and then we'll do echo, I guess we'll put a new line here. And part is name. ID one, two, three. So what will happen is uh, when you're referencing a, a field that doesn't exist, it will then go look at that uh, particular, so if I backed out of here a little bit, you would see or it would reference that value field that I was talking about earlier. So this is all cool. This is how you find different things. You could also uh, make things a little different. If you wanted to do select, with select, all you can, you can select only the columns you want instead of every column. 
Uh, let's put name in here and then the same filter. So from this point on is the same thing for find. It's just with select, you add this guy right here. So now if I go here, it's not selecting the ID anymore, it's just the name. So that's kind of helpful if you have a, a wide table with a lot of columns in there. You don't want to select all your columns, but you do want to select something. So you can just select the fields you want. It saves on memory and in general, it's a little bit nicer. So that's kind of cool with what we can do there. But what about this particular function here? And then we're going to have to make an update one too. So update, we'll worry about that guy later. But for now, here we are. So here's the car part name, and now we have this raw SQL query, but instead of that, we're gonna use our fancy new mapper. Actually, just for my sake, I'm gonna do this. I, I should have used the singular, oh well. All right, so now we have car parts, here we are. So now we have a car part, and then this is how you do it. You go car part, name equals car part name and then car part save and then it will reroute you so if i come over here to our routes file so what i do is car parts insert something so car parts insert and we're going to do uh let's see uh radio We'll do a radio. So now it redirect me back here, and now I have radio. And then let's see, let's do one more insert. Um, we'll do seat, but we will spell it wrong. Oh no, we spelled seat wrong, so how are we gonna do that? Well, let's come back here, so now we're gonna need an update. Update. And of course, this is not what you would normally do. This is just to show you how to quickly do things and take care of them. So update, and then we'll do car part ID, and then we'll do updated name. Not something you'd normally do, but this is just for a tutorial, and you can get away with a lot of stuff in a tutorial. So we have car part ID, updated name. And just so I can see all the IDs, we're going to switch this back to a find. Here we are. So now we let's copy this guy right here. Make this guy updated name. And then we'll get ID equals our car part ID. That is what I named it, correct? Car part ID, all right. So now we're still getting it this way. Don't need this, don't need this. But now what you can do is you go car part load, which will load a row or rows if you want to load rows, but I generally like to keep it where it will only load one row at a time. Makes life a little bit easier when you're trying to sanely manage some stuff. So then it's an array, and you go where ID equals this, and then you add an ID, and there you go. There is another field over here where you can do things like order and group by and all that, so just bear that in mind with that field, but we don't need that in this case. So now car part name equals updated name, and you guessed it, save. Now we save it, and then it's going to redirect us back to car parts. So let's get the ID that we need. So car parts, update. We're gonna update five, because we messed it up, and we're gonna spell seat correctly. So if I hit enter, it should redirect us and land us back on here with the seat spelled correctly. And look, there she is. Now seat is spelled correctly. So. This is just a few examples of things that you can do. There are some other helpful things with models that will uh, you'll probably run into. So one of them is car part reset. So if you've loaded something 
or something has been saved and now you have it, it's called hydrated, which so that you can imagine that the model is dry and then once you load something into it or once you start saving stuff to it, it becomes hydrated. So if something is hydrated, but you need to work with something else again, then what you would do is reset it and then start it over. So for instance, I could do this over here with the insert actually. So I would reset it and then I'll do just as an example, car part name is equal to, we'll do, uh, just to be dumb, uh, copy, just to say we can do that. If I did not do this, what happens is after car part, once you save it, then car part ID actually has something in it now. <clears throat> So when I hit reset, it actually wipes out the ID, wipes out all the data, and starts it over as if it's a brand new model. So then you do the name, and then you save it. So when I do this insert for the next thing, insert, uh, we'll do a backseat. This should insert backseat and backseat copy. And there they are, backseat and backseat copy. So it was able to pull both of those back. So let's say I needed to do a little bit of tweaking with this. So let's say I needed to find something where name is like something. And the something that I want is a uh, seat. So this should only find models where the name is like this. So since I have three, there only should be three showing up here. So there's only seat because I need to do this. Wild cards, that is my bad, but at least it was partially working. There we go, now we have seat, back seat, and back seat copy. They're all showing up now. So this is how you're going to find multiple rows in your database if you need to pull them back. And this is what you're gonna do if you needed to either update it or even just reference it, because sometimes you're maybe building a new page or, or getting data from a form, which reminds me, you can do this thing. So if I had a form right here, well, I guess we'll just show this for example. I could do car part, copy from, and I could do post. And this will copy everything from the post. And if it matches a field name in here, it will assign it to it. And then you just hit save and away you go. This is a little dicey because if you accidentally have a value in there that you weren't planning on having and it gets overwritten, you could be confused for a little bit. Uh, my policy is always whitelist what you want specifically, either whitelist or blacklist. This is called graylisting, where you just kind of throw something at it and see what sticks. And sometimes that comes back to bite you. It's much better and it takes a little more work to individually go car part name equals this and car part some other value equals this and car part company ID equals this. It's a little more painstaking, but it will help you in the long run to not be confused when something changes and you're like, well, why isn't this updating? Why isn't it doing it? So while this is here, I don't highly recommend it. If you do use it, just know that there are consequences that could come with it. So one final thing that I wanted to show you guys. So here's the dev tools up here. So here's a model. Well, what if I didn't really want to do this DB SQL mapper? It kind of looks a little ugly. What if I didn't want to do that all the time? So what I could do, come over here, add a new model. So the model name will be oh, car part, because I can spell. And the table name is car parts. You should add it in there. And now it's detected in there. So come back out here to model car part. You can see in here that it adds this in. So all I need to do is new class car part and then put the database in there and then it should work just fine. So let's switch this around. Now we have this new class, so we'll just do car part. Don't need this anymore. 
So now we can change this one, this one, and this one. It's just a little cleaner. So that's nice. Then you may have seen some of these, like before insert and before update, before I walked away from this screen. So these are really cool. Uh, if you're, for instance, adding a new row, this before insert event will get run and you can use it to automatically assign things. So I have a couple examples in here that get um, instantiated when you create a new model. So if you have a new token that's generated, you can automatically have it create a token for you without going, so for instance, if this had a, a token and I was you know inserting it, I wouldn't need to go car part token equals hash uh, 256 da 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 da. I wouldn't need to do that because it would, when it runs save, it would automatically recognize like, oh, 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 it wants to generate a new token right here. You know, an added date time, you could do that. Uh, if you didn't assign an added by user ID, maybe you have a session user ID that you could do. This helps save a lot of time. And the same thing with update. You, instead of always specifying like the last time this was updated was this, and you know, having these update statements everywhere, it's just, Anytime this model is updated, update these fields as well. So these guys are really, really helpful. They help save you on a lot of time. So now with all this done, I'm still here. Should just work. Yep, just working just as it should be. So this has been kind of a, a high level overview of models, how you can find them and then insert them, reset them, and then update them. There's other fun things that you can do, which you can look at the fat free documentation for. Of course, if you like the videos, you can subscribe because it's what the cool kids do. And uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I actually will answer them so far as I don't get overwhelmed. But uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this.